So when I was interning at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, I attended a talk and that talk pretty much changed my life. At the time, I was still deciding between on whether I wanted to do a PhD or not. And the talk was about, should you do a PhD? And initially it was just a discussion about how PhDs lead to innovation. And if you really like ideas and exploring ideas and you like collaborating with other researchers, you should do a PhD. But I still was not sure. So then I went and I spoke to the engineer and I reached out to him with specific questions. And while there were reasons they mentioned that would be in favor of doing the PhD, such as being able to have a higher salary, being able to teach, being more respected in the field. In reality, I didn't care about any of that. What I really wanted is just to do something fun that I get to enjoy and just do something that I can actually find meaningful. And this is where the NASA engineer told me two things that absolutely blew my mind. First thing was when I told him that I didn't really have specific reasons to do a PhD, but my gut feeling was telling me it should be the thing that I should be doing. I was kind of being propelled towards it. And he laughed and he said, okay, that's the single most reason you should do a PhD. The desire to do a PhD is the single reason you should do one. And to me, this was a bit surprising because I thought I was like at a very scientific place and I had the wrong idea of science where I was thinking, oh, I should make a list of pros and cons and go with the logical decision. But then he told me that you know your best better than anyone else. So learn to trust your instincts because you're the only one who really knows what you want deep down. And that's something that cannot be explained by a pros and cons list. But the real piece of advice that he gave me was a second piece. And that's really the one that stuck out with me for a long time. And it was centered around the idea of me wanting to have the perfect career and have the perfect plan figured out. And mind you, I was only 21 years old at the time. And I was just thinking that I have to get it perfect. And he told me, well, worst case, you could do a PhD and then go get a job doing something else or go work in another area. And I paused and I was in my head, I'm like, wait, can you actually do that? And then he went on to explain that doing a PhD PhD is more about just learning how to learn and giving yourself permission to learn and dive deep into a topic. Obviously, the area that you do your PhD in matters and it's something that is important and should be something you're interested in, but you could very much graduate that and then end up going working in something else. In other words, he said, you don't need to get it right. You don't need to get it perfectly right. And to me, that was so freeing. And that was really the secret that allowed me to go on and just do amazing things afterwards, because very often that feeling that you need to get it perfectly right is the single most paralyzing thing you can do to yourself. And ironically, like telling yourself, okay, I might try this and it may crash and that's totally okay. And just giving yourself permission to crash and burn is going to free you up to go and do the thing that's actually going to end up benefiting you in the long term. And perhaps I consider myself so fortunate to have learned so early on the lesson that if you get inspiration or if you get a desire to do something and you really want to do it, you should accept that there's a chance that it may not work out and that's totally okay. And accepting that it may not work out will actually propel you forward and give you permission to go ahead and execute on it and do a really good job executing and just giving it your best shot because you're detached of whatever happens or not. The thing that is most paralyzing is constantly asking yourself, what if it doesn't work out? And let me tell you, there's no more frustrating combination than having the desire to do something and fear of it not working out and thus being paralyzed and not taking action on it. And I can reflect on this three years later now that I'm like very deep into the PhD program, almost graduating. It was never about the PhD. It's not about the PhD. It's not about the research. It's about the idea of being good at taking the first step in whatever it is that you feel propelled towards. And mind you, this is just my philosophy in life. This is the philosophy of the NASA engineer that instilled these ideas in me that I strongly agree with. Some people do like to plan like a 10 year step by step thing, but I kind of tend to go by like what feels right and then just take the first step and execute very well on it. Obviously, I do have some type of vision of what I want down the line in life. But the thing that makes me totally free to pursue it is the total acceptance that it may all crash and burn. And that's okay. And I know that may sound terrifying because you may be in the stage where you're like, no, it has to work out, it has to work out, it has to work out. And yes, that attitude can serve you in some areas, like it could at least help you persist. But you have to be mindful if that attitude is actually serving you and taking action or whether it's paralyzing you from taking action because of fear of failure. And this is really the value I got from working at NASA is it's not so much the technical stuff I learned or the science or the technical knowledge that I gained. It's more just being around some of the most brilliant brains, human brains that you can imagine. And people who are so smart and creative and imaginative and are kind of tapped in within what they really want and with their own feelings. Now, if you are considering doing a PhD, I did make a separate video that where I explain in detail the reasons why I did it and what I ended up studying. And I go in a bit more depth on whether it's the right thing for you or not. So you should go ahead and check it out over here.